In this section, I'm going to explain you about the route reflector concept using clusters. Now, if you get back to our previous topics, what we learned, like we have seen something called BGP split horizon rule. Now, what this rule is going to say that an update sent by one IBGP neighbor should not be sent back to another IBGP neighbor. So to overcome this, this uh, we generally use something called, we have possible solutions. Either we can go with full mesh neighborship or we can use a route reflector concept. Or we can also go with some BGP configurations if your transit AS is very big. Now, if you go with a full mesh, we have some concerns, we have some issues. So that's the reason if your transit AS or a autonomous system is very big. So we either we go with a route reflectors or we go with a configurations. Now we also seen some of the basic IB, IBGP peering using route reflectors. Now in route reflectors, all the clients are going to form neighborship with only server and client to client neighborship is not required. And in case if you are going with a multiple servers, let's say uh, one multiple servers for redundancy, you can have a client to server peering between the server server. Now this is also we have this also we have seen in our basic route reflector concept. So now we'll get into some more in detail of a route reflector configurations where we call it as clusters. Now in clusters, what we are doing is let's take an example. This is your transit AS which is very big. So I got uh, more than 40 routers running in my transit autonomous system number. So if I go with a normal route reflector concept, let's say I'm going to make two RR servers, RR server one and RR server two, uh, whatever the remaining 38 routers, which will be my clients, it has to pair with RR server one and also they should pair with RR server two. And the server has to pair with all the remaining 38 clients. Now, uh, if you think about the configuration, it goes a little bit very big configuration. So what I can do is to optimize it, I can use a concept of clusters where I can divide my autonomous system number, which is a 40 routers. Let's say I'm going to divide them into 20 routers group or maybe two or more than two. I'm just taking two here. And in this 20 routers, I can make two RR servers. Let's say RR server one and RR server two and the remaining nine, 18 will be my clients. The same thing, I'm going to do the same thing here also. I have RR server one, RR server two, which will be my, um, in, in the second set of routers. And I'm going to pair with the 18 to 18 routers. Now this part generally is referred as one cluster and the other part will be referred as one cluster. Now any update received from uh, any of the client, it will be updated to server. Server is going to update again to remaining clients. In case if any one of the server goes down still, they will be able to exchange the routes, but it will be only within the cluster again. Similar way, the same thing happens here also, but these two are different set of route reflector configurations and they don't exchange any routes between them unless and until you have again, IBGP peering between them. Now we are not going to peer each and every client again back to this server. Instead, I'm going to peer this server along with this server, now, which means if any update coming from the client, it's going to update the server, local route reflector server within the same cluster. And this server is going to update to another server, which is in a different cluster. And then that server is going to again update back to the other clients. Now this way we can minimize the number of route reflector peers on the servers. So we call this configuration as server. You can see here I got one sample diagram here. So if the, all the routers are in the same autonomous system number 212 but I'm going to have a separate set of RR servers for this first cluster. This is my first cluster, cluster one and cluster two. So cluster represents a group of uh, route reflector server configurations. It's a group we can say. Now all the clients will peer with our RR servers. So in our scenario, I got both RR servers, which means they are going to peer with both RR servers. And on the cluster two also, they are going to peer with both the RR servers. Now we don't have a peering between this client to this RR server because we don't want to have a full a full IBGP peering from every client to every RR server because we are differentiating them in different clusters. And what we'll do is we'll ensure that there is a peering between RR server to RR server so that if any update is coming from this client, it will update its local RR server. And this RR server will update the other RR server. Now for this RR server, this will be client. So just like uh, the client configuration and for this RR server, this will be client. 
now the neighborship between both the rr servers in different clusters they have uh, will be just like a client server neighborship the same neighborship which we do here now the from this client you will update the server this server is updating the other server and then finally it is going to update the clients so in this way still there will be uh, exchange of the routes but we are just optimizing the route reflector configurations where it's generally applicable in a big size transit autonomous system numbers let's try to see how it is going to work so the first point you can see a group of redundant route reflector servers and then clients form a cluster and each cluster is going to have a unique cluster id now which means in my scenario let's say in this scenario this is my rr server and by default whatever the route id of the rr server is going to be the cluster id so which means let's say the route id of this router is 10.1.1.1 and that will be the automatic the cluster id of this cluster okay so cluster ID is something which identifies a specific cluster okay so let's try to get into some of the configuration relating to this to implement and verify the Router reflector cluster configuration. I got uh, six routers here, and all the six routers belong to the same autonomous system number that is AS500. And in this, I'm going to create two different set of clusters. Anyway, I don't have a big network like 30, 40 routers, but I'm going to uh, verify this. I'm going to make this three routers as a part of one cluster. You can see, and the other group is this. So we got three set of routers. In this two clusters i'm going to make one specific as rr server so in my scenario i'm going to make r1 as my rr server and these two will be my clients and similar way in the other cluster i'm going to make any router you can choose it's up to you so i'm going to make this r3 as rr server which is going to pair with the remaining two routers that is router 2 and router 6 and then we'll try to verify how the routes exchange is going to happen and also we'll get into some of the attributes which are generally uh, created like we have originator id and then we'll see some cluster id cluster and also we'll uh, we'll see something called cluster list so how it is going to work we'll get into that in detail with some practical scenarios so let us try to get into that so the first step i need to do is i need to configure eajrp inside the as 500 so to provide reachability between this because we are going to peer with loopback interfaces in ibgp now to provide reachability, I need to configure any of the IGP protocol inside the autonomous system number. So I'm using EHRP in my scenario. If you want, you can use either OSP of RIP or any other protocol. So I'm going to advertise all the interfaces. So in my lab, it's already pre-configured. So this is something pre-configured in my lab here. Let me, uh, let us verify here. I'll go to router one here. Router one is uh, if I verify show IP protocols, I have EHRP 100 pre-configured inside and these are the, all the networks which are advertised. And if you want to verify, you can say show run section EHRP to verify the EHRP configurations. Now EHRP is already configured on the router one. And if I verify show IP EHRP neighbors, now router one is having three neighbors. Router one is forming neighborship with router two, router four and router five already they are neighbors and if I verify the routing table show IP route EHRP I can see all the routes whatever you see in the diagram so in fact I advertise each and every route including the loopbacks uh, including the LAN interfaces and also the WAN interfaces so mostly this all 12.0 these are the loopbacks of router 2 13.0 the loopbacks of router 3 14.0 loopbacks of router 4 and then this is a 60 dot network is a LAN interface of router 6 you can see here and this 30 dot network is a LAN interface of router 3 and then you can see some more networks 50 dot network is a LAN interface of router 5 and then 16 dot is the loopback of router 6 so I'm getting all the routes which means EHRP is already pre-configured in my scenario but when you are doing the lab probably you can follow the documentation here you can see all the EHRP is pre-configured just similar to what I have shown here and also you have neighborship established and you are able to see all the routes so which means the first step i already pre-configured now from here onwards i'm going to configure everything so this is our task now now my task is here i'm going to create two different clusters i'm not going to make one cluster here two different clusters where 
R1 will be my RR server. So all the routers will be configured in the AS500 and R1 should be RR server for router 5 and router 4, which means router 5, router 4, this is my RR server. Now similar way, I'm going to make R3 as server for the remaining two routers. This is my RR server and these two are my clients. Okay, so two different clusters. And after that, what we'll do is in order to exchange the routes between the two different uh, clusters, in order to exchange the routes between the clusters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure IBGP peering between both the servers, which means now these two routers are going to peer between them. So this is the IBGP peering between these two servers and then we'll verify some route, let's say 60 dot network when it is getting advertised to router 2, router 2 will advertise to router the other server and then finally it will see here. So it is uh, doing that, it is also going to provide some attributes information like originator ID, cluster, cluster ID will get into that, uh, will verify those things as well. So let us start with our configuration here. So I'll start with router 1. So let's try to configure this cluster here, the, the router 1 configuration. <coughs> 